Hey, I'm Steve from Mixer Texture. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a quick mix with Ableton Live. And this is something you can do if you're a beginner with only like six tracks inside your song, or if you're an advanced mixer and you're making songs where you have track groups and drum racks and all kinds of stuff, the principles still apply. So what do we have here? Uh, we got some music. The first thing is always to just identify what's in the, mi <clears throat> what's in the mix. Um, to do this, I'm gonna turn off some tracks and get it down to the basics. The first thing I recommend you do is get your kick drum on a separate channel. You can see that this drum rack, the Sage Reef kit, the, the sub and the kick started as part of this drum rack, but I wanna always have my kick drum and my sub bass on their own channels so I can set their levels independently and not mess up anything else in the rack. So to do that from a drum rack, I opened up the rack, I found the, the kick and the sub, and I did extract chains, which let me create these two instruments on their own channels. And now to organize my session, I'm gonna do it kind of old school and go kick on channel one, sub on two, drag my drums over to three. So now the first thing I just did, I have channel one labeled, it says kick, channel two labeled says sub, and this is gonna be drums, so I know. And now I've got these three sounds going by themselves and I know the rest are instruments. Um, we can hear all the sounds in the mix, but obviously the master channel is clipping into the red and this is not balanced at all. So the goal here is to make a balanced mix where we still have enough headroom so we can export a pre-master and get it mastered. Basic guideline is to set your kick drum so that the master channel is peaking at minus 12 dB. To see the peak level meters, take your mixer, get the mouse where it makes that arrow and drag up till you see the output fader level that says minus 12 and then the peak at minus 13. I like it that the master channel is peaking around minus 12. I don't like it that it got quieter, I can't hear it. What's the solution? Turn your monitors up. Faders down, monitors up. You don't get a loud mix by pushing up the channels in your session up into the red. You get a loud track by making a balanced mix and then having good mastering and playing it in a room with a big amp, so it sounds loud. So the goal here, faders down, monitors up, Keep your kick drum making the master channel peak around minus 12. That will give you enough headroom to mix the rest of your sounds in there. And if it's not loud enough for you, just turn up your headphones, turn up your monitors. Now here's a really important tactic. I wanna bring in the sub bass, but remember, I just turned up the volume in the room. I turned up my headphones. If I unmute track two, the sub is gonna be blasting loud. It could even possibly damage some speakers. So I bring the fader all the way down, unmute and slowly bring it up. What we're doing is building a low end foundation. This is really important for electronic music. We want the kick drum and the sub bass working together so that we can put all the other sounds around them and have it feel right. I like to keep a master channel, a spectrum analyzer on the master channel where I can see what frequencies these are happening at. So there's a kick drum. It's big around 65, 67 Hertz. I'm looking in the little box on the lower left. I put the mouse on the spectrum where I see the bump. It shows about 68 Hertz, which is good. When I bring in the sub bass, I got a big bump down there, 47, 48 Hertz. This is really nice because the kick and the sub are on two different notes or two, two different frequencies. They're not competing. So I can turn up the sub, pretty much make it equally loud as the kick. Check my master channel. We still have a good 11, 12 dB of headroom. So I'm in good shape to bring in the rest of the sounds. I wanna hear the drums. Am I gonna unmute track three? No, I don't want to activate track three. I don't want to blast my ears with super loud drums. So take the fader all the way down, activate the track, and then fade it up. This will save your ass in a live setting. You do not want to unmute a track and blast the audience with something really, really loud. It's going to shock them. It's not going to feel good for you. People cannot blink their ears. So don't do that. <clears throat> At this point, if you have your kick in your sub making a good low end foundation, the rest is really easy. There's going to be a couple problems to solve, but at that point, you can basically mix by feel. One thing I'm gonna recommend is always solo a track, check it out on the spectrum, and make sure you can see what's going on. Sometimes there's crazy low end in a sound that you need to filter out. Even a hi-hat can have a lot of low end. This is looking good. The biggest bump I see is down about 168. So let's leave this here. What is track four? It says Casio. Okay, let's mute the other instruments. Just work with the... Obviously a melodic instrument. What is on track five? Now this is an interesting sound. It's got some low end in there. 
I've got some buzz, some crackle, mid-range. It's a, it's a wide range sound. It's a full spectrum, full range sound. Probably we're gonna EQ this a little bit to make space for the other instruments. And this one is interesting because it doesn't happen very much. It's only once in a while and it's a mid-range sound. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the Casio lead, drag it to the right. Now my instrument groups have this, track four is called the stop and go bass. That's like a constant mid-range sound. And we have the lead melody and the keyboard part going around them. How do I get all these instruments to fit together? How do I make the instruments fit together in the track? This is the problem we're trying to solve next. We got the low end working with the kick and kick and sub. Now we need to make some space for the mid-range sound. So first thing I'm gonna do is put the lead off to the right a little bit, put the chords off to the left a little bit. I'm gonna bring the lead down just a bit and I'm gonna bring these chords up. The reason is the chords on track five don't happen very often, so it's okay for them to be loud. If you have a sound that only comes once in a while, it can be a little louder to pop out and then disappear. This bass sound can come down a little bit. Now let's examine the low end one more time. I think this stop and go bass has a little more low frequency than we need. So I'm gonna grab EQ8, drop it on here. First thing is kick in a high pass filter. And the reason is when a sound has extra sub, sub bass frequencies or low frequencies, they basically take away power from the kick drum. They make the mix feel muddy and crowded. It prevents your kick drum and your sub bass from hitting hard. And you're also not even using those frequencies in the sound. So I think we can go up to about hundred Hertz. Get rid of some of that low end. After you, make EQ after you make EQ adjustments, check the mix to make sure that your decisions fit. You don't want to just EQ in solo. Drop it back in the mix. Ask the question, can I still hear the sub bass and the kick drum after I EQ this? Now I can do that in solo, it might sound cool, but that doesn't sound good in the mix. If I roll it up too much like that, I can still hear that sound, but that's taking out too much of the sound. So with EQing, start by subtracting frequencies that you don't need, aim to preserve as much of the sound as you can, and just don't overdo it. Let's bring in the uh, melody. Solo that, check the frequency spectrum. That sound is mostly happening in the mid-range, right? And this sound is really busy. What if I go here and EQ out the frequencies where that melody is happening? Where is the melody happening? I see 500, I see 800, I see 1000. So it's like the middle of the mid-range. Let's go here and Oops, I'm listening to the wrong track. <laughs> All that middle mid-range stuff that's in this kind of like bleepy bass sound. I'm gonna duck those down. Subtractive EQing to make space for the lead melody. Check those two together. Right there with that frequency boosted up on track four, it's kind of competing with the melody. So I'll suck that frequency out. So the track four, I made space for track six to poke up. Does this sound have any low frequency we want to get rid of? Goes down to about 295. Doesn't sound like there's a lot of bass, but I want to show you another tool, which is auto filter. If you only want to get rid of the low end and you don't need to do any other EQing, just grab an auto filter. Let's put it up to like 125 Hertz just to make sure there's no extra low frequency crap coming through there. Now we ask the question, can we hear every instrument? Do they have their own space in the mix? Do they have room to breathe and speak at the frequencies where they naturally exist? And check them with everything else. It's already sounding better. Let's go uh, fast forward to a couple of little effects. You can see on my returns, I have one reverb, reverb two, and an echo. So reverb one is gonna be for drums, and we're gonna go to the drum mix.
You want the reverb enough that you can hear it. And when you mute the reverb, it makes it, you can hear that it's gone, but when it's in, it's not super obvious. Okay, when I mute that reverb, I can hear that it's gone. And when it's in, it's not super obvious. That's about where you want it to be for the reverb. Now let's work with the instruments and see what kind of reverb we can do on B. I'm adding a little bit of reverb from each sound. When I mute them, it makes a big hole. And when the reverb is in, it's not super obvious. Let's take that down a little bit shorter. <clears throat> you know what I like to do also is um, I map a keyboard key, like the letter Z, to my effects returns so that I can easily bypass them all and just make sure they're all okay together. That sounds decent. I know I'm going through this quickly, but I want to give you the steps for mixing. So let's review. Number one, get your kick, drum, and sub bass on their own separate channels so you can mix the levels. The main guideline is have your kick drum working so that the master channel shows minus 12 dB, which gives you space to build the mix around it. Then bring in your kick and your sub. And remember that when you're introducing a new sound to the mix, first bring the fader down, then activate the track and unmute it, then fade it up so you don't blast your ears with a surprise shock of sound, especially when you're playing live. After you get your kick drum and your sub bass working together at a nice low frequency foundation, there's a lot more EQ and compression and side chaining, all that stuff you can learn later. First, just get a good low frequency foundation using the volumes of these sounds. Then you can bring in your other instruments, ask the question, do these instruments have extra low frequency that I need to remove? Are any instruments having a, a clash of frequencies or masking each other or covering each other up? Carve out space so each instrument is operating in its own frequency band to clearly speak and come through without competing against anything else. Then you can try some pan position to spread them apart in the stereo field and add some spatial effects to get a mix that has a, kind of a depth and a 3D dimension to it. And check it out, we're feeling more balanced. We still have like five dB of headroom, so if I'm feeling like, oh, I need some more kick drum, put that right up to minus nine, take my sub up a little bit, and I still have headroom, which is awesome. So the last step when you want to make a test mix, go to your master channel, drop on a glue compressor. Slow attack, long release, two to one. Bring down the ratio, or bring down the threshold until it's, uh, less than 5 dB of compression. You want to see it bouncing a little bit, but not a lot. Now we're going to add some makeup gain until the master channel starts to clip to get a nice loud test mix. You can hit the soft clip button if you like that sound. I like to put a master limiter on there. And that is our mix. Now, that was super quick. There's more that you can do and mixing goes in a, <laughs> a lot deeper than this, but for making a basic quick mix, the main idea is to get your low end working, bring up the sounds in the stereo field, don't push the master channel too hot, and any frequencies that are spiky or pointing out, cut before you boost, subtract, do subtractive EQ to bring down the frequencies that are annoying before you try to boost up anything else. These guidelines will always work no matter how many channels you have in a session or how many, I don't care if you have 24 layers of backup vocals and 170 tracks inside your song, these principles are still going to work. And you might want to spend a little more time on it than 10 minutes in this video. <laughs> but I hope that helped. If this is useful to you, drop a comment, let me know. And you can always email me, steve at mixatexture.com to find out more how you can learn to mix with things like my course, Make Space for Bass, which is really fun. I think you might like it. So check it out. And thanks for watching. See you next time.